Big thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. You can learn more at audible.com slash badseed. It always makes my job easy when I'm approached by a sponsor and I'm already using and enjoying their product in my day-to-day -day life, and Audible is definitely one of those. Audible makes it really easy for me to get the information I need about business growth, finance, and healthy mindset stuff, so the time I spend behind the camera can also be used learning and forming new ideas. Like right now, I'm listening to The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas J. Stanley and William D. Danko. And I can do that from my desktop while I'm working in the studio, and if the dog needs a walk or I have to drive somewhere, I can pull it right up on the app on my phone and pick up exactly where I left off. Got to jump on a flight? You can download titles right to your device and listen offline anywhere. They have thousands of titles and something that really surprised me, it's not just audiobooks. They've got podcasts, guided wellness content, comedy, and original titles that you can't get anywhere else. The new Plus catalog really levels up the value and offers a ton of new content at no additional cost. New members can always try Audible for free and so can you by going to audible.com slash badseed or you can tell Text bad seed to 500 500. Big thanks to Audible for sponsoring today and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right, I've got something really special and very niche today. Say you're looking for an ultra lightweight wireless version of your favorite mouse shape, like the Air 58, the XM1, the Viper Mini, and it doesn't exist. That's Piranha Mods, a lightweight 3D printed shell of your favorite mouse shape wrapped around Logitech Lightspeed wireless technology. We're gonna talk about what these mice are and what they are not, and why you may wanna grab one while you still can. You ready? Let's go. So I have two of these in house today. We've got the Viper Ultralight and we've also got the XM1 Wireless. As I said, these are not cheap. They're like 200 euro, which is right around $250 US. So we're gonna start with the whole experience. It arrives in a zippered hard shell case. Inside you'll get your mouse, of course, plus a couple of grips that look hand cut versus laser cut. I, I mean like homemade and a charging cable, one of the coolest I've seen. Is it micro USB or USB-C? No, it's a USB-A to magnetic charging port. It's like three feet long, it's braided. Obviously play and charge is not going to be a thing here, but it's pretty damn cool. So the first obvious question, why? Well, the stock Viper Ultimate, 75 grams, Piranha Mods, 60 grams on my scale. The XM1R, 71 grams, not wireless. Piranha Mods, 62 grams, wireless. The shapes and sizes are really true to the original designs as well. For legal reasons, I'm not gonna say that they're identical, but well. All right, so how? Well, like putting a Lambo body on a Fiero frame, they start with the wireless guts of a Logitech G305 or G603, and then that's mated to a captive AAA battery that actually is charged via micro USB that's hiding underneath that magnetic charging port. When I say it's based on Logitech hardware, it is Logitech hardware. You can see the branding on the PCB and G-Hub is where you're gonna go to make any adjustments to the mouse. The outer shell is then completely 3D printed. And I don't know a lot about 3D printing, but it's very obviously 3D printed like little nicks, ridges, imperfections, it's part of it. That's not really the point, it's about ultralight performance. I mean, when you look at this frame, there's basically nothing to it. You can practically see through it from almost every angle. It actually has a surprising amount of structural strength side to side. It's sturdier in hand than I expected. Top and bottom, you're gonna, of course, get some flex. There's no sense in me trying to crush this mouse in my hand because I'm pretty confident that I can. All that said, for the purposes of using it as a gaming mouse, it didn't give me any problems at all. The coating appears to be some sort of matte paint. Full disclosure, the first ones he sent did start to have issues with the paint, which I didn't even notice until he reached out to me to see if mine was affected. The last ones that came in, I haven't had any issues with at all, and I've been running the Viper version for probably about two weeks strong now. Underneath, you've got a basic on-off switch and small round PTFE feet with rounded edges. Now, how many you get and where they're positioned depend on which model you go for. I was pretty skeptical of these, but the glide is actually just fine. Better than my actual broken Viper Ultimate. The scroll wheel is right out of the Logitech mice. No issues with it in game, but it seems to lack any brace to hold the outside edge down, meaning you can lift it up from that side and it feels pretty janky, but again, doesn't affect normal operation at all. Really happy to see that the switches on the triggers are the Kale Red GM 4.0s. The side buttons are also right out of what appears to be the G305 in both of my models as well. This is of particular interest to me because I main a Viper and those side buttons are basically hiding from you. So it's nice that these are right where you need them to be. Main triggers are comprised of the actual shell itself. So side play isn't really an issue, but you do get some notable pre-travel and seemingly bottomless post-travel. This is much more pronounced on the Viper model than the XM1. They've recently adopted some new tech that allows you to control the amount of travel you have with the little screwdriver, which is included and a tensioning screw under each trigger. The process is still a little fiddly. I always feel like we're gonna break something here so I'm waiting on the official instructions for this.
because everything about this mouse is so light, I never noticed the pre or post travel in game. And I've been maining the Viper version for well over a month now. It's seen heavy, heavy use. On the topic of battery life, I used it for basically a solid week before it needed a recharge for the first time. I'm sure then that I don't have to tell you that the mouse performs like a dream. I didn't choose to main it for testing purposes. I chose to main it because it's a lighter Viper shape with better side buttons, KLGM switches, and a taller scroll wheel. And therein lies the interesting conversation. Not what about these mice are, but about what they aren't, because this isn't really a Razer Viper Ultimate. No optical switches, no left-hand support, no heavily tweaked firmware between the sensor and the host side, no charging dock, no Synapse, which in fairness, most of you will probably treat as a pro versus a con. What it is, is a G305 or a 603, but probably a G305, a 50 to $60 wireless mouse with wireless tech that punches way above its weight class in a stripped down ultralight performance shell. Do I notice the performance difference between it and the real Razer Viper Ultimate that I've made for an insanely long time? Yes, but not because this mouse is missing the Razer secret recipe stuff. It's because it's a lighter mouse and I play consistently better with lighter mice. That brings up another interesting point. How long can they get away with this before they get sued? Well, depending on how well this video does, probably not long and they know that. These complete mice aren't the only product they offer. They also have DIY kits and specific shell pieces for popular mice. Piranha Mods envisions a scenario where the end user sends them like a clay model of their most ideal size and shape, and they then turn it into a completely custom mouse, which oddly, is not a service that they currently offer. There's not really a lot to break down here in terms of value. If your favorite mouse shape is not available in wireless or lightweight or both, it can be right now, but it's gonna cost you and it's gonna lack the level of polish that you would get with a traditional retail consumer electronic. And it's important to remember that fundamentally it functions just like a G305 because it is a G305. I gotta tell you, being largely bored of the production mouse market, I'm fascinated with this because they don't have to follow any rules. No concessions made for mass production, no marketing, no trying to appeal to the largest consumer base to move units, no trying to reinvent the wheel just for the sake of having something new to sell. None of that, it feels pirate, underground, custom. It has a level of polish to it, but it's still rough around the edges. It's like something your crazy buddy cooked up in his bedroom and it just works. And it gave me my new main by improving on the areas of the Viper Ultimate that I wasn't necessarily a big fan of and a wireless XM1. So it's important to stress here too that I have no financial arrangement with Piranha Mods, no affiliate deal. Matter of fact, the only money that was exchanged was me paying him for the base materials because that's all he would take from me. They are based in Germany, so expect some longer shipping if you're in the US. It's my understanding that they're doing restocks every so often and then selling through that stock. I'll leave all the links you need down in the description if you wanna get your hands on one. As always, any questions, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.